Thomas, thank you for joining us. Sure. What brings you to European Future Bioenergy? Well, I think it's uh, an important event where the industry comes together to, to talk about how we can ensure that, uh, that bioenergy is a relevant solution for society today and also in the future. So, Dong has reduced their CO2 by 41% between 2006 and 2014, and your aspiration is 60% by 2020. How are you going about reaching that? Well, I guess we have uh, three main levers. Uh, one is that we have actually taken out a lot of our old uh, coal-fired stations uh, since 2009. 40% capacity has gone. We are uh, also putting biomass in and exiting coal in our power stations, so we are converting them from coal, gas to biomass. And then, uh, last but not least, uh, we have also built a huge uh, offshore wind uh, portfolio. Rennie Science mm. is a rather exciting project. Uh, AD sort of Mark II. Mm. How are you going about doing that? Well, we have uh, for a long time uh, been developing this technology based on our roots in the, in the power sector uh, to actually treat waste by way of enzymes. So the enzymes will basically produce the, the, the liquid for the, uh, for the biogas and it will also make sure that we can have recyclables like uh, plastic and metals out of unsorted household waste. What's different on this technology to conventional AD? Well, I guess the AD part is just uh, fed by a more uh, powerful liquid. Uh, the real uh, the true uh, innovation here is that we can take unsorted household waste from households in black bags we just put it into a reactor, we add hot water and enzymes, and then the enzymes is going to do the sorting for us so we can basically get a very efficient way of extracting the resource from the waste. And this is uh, first of a kind? We are right now building the first of its kind uh, plant in the UK near Manchester and it's going to be commissioned next spring. Why in the UK? Because the UK uh, waste sector uh, has been characterized by landfilling uh, for, for many decades. Now they're searching for new solutions and uh, they need new technologies to, uh, to sort the waste issue. So this will be able to process 150,000 homes worth of waste. Do you have plans to enlarge that portfolio? Obviously, uh, when uh, we have shown uh, that the, the Northwich uh, site uh, in, in the UK is a success, we will of course continue to roll out the, the, the Renaissance technology in the UK and elsewhere. And is that something you're going to license or, or is it IP that you will hold? Firmly hold of. This is IP that we firmly uh, hold on to, and uh, and we uh, that we will do this uh, where we where we basically do build and operate uh, projects uh, within our within our footprint. So you're speaking later on today about the future of biomass. Yes. What are you going to cover? In well, I'll tell a little bit about our experience in Denmark, where uh, in my division we have ten uh, large power stations in Denmark. Uh, we are the largest operator uh, of, of uh, these uh, combined heat and power stations. We are number one in district heating, number one in power. We have uh, years back decided to convert these power stations from oil, uh, from coal and gas, and into sustainable biomass. And that process is now underway. We have already converted two. We are right now con converting three more. And then the last two of, of a portfolio of seven will be converted over the next few years. So our uh, whole fuel mix is going to change dramatically uh, towards 2020, where we'll be using uh, almost no uh, coal and gas and a lot of biomass. So, so that's one of the points I'm going to uh, stress. The other point is, how can we as an industry make sure that bioenergy maintains its relevance also in the power markets in the years ahead? How do you assure that you remain sustainable if you're using that much biomass? We have put down uh, very strict requirements on the, on the sustainability parts, uh, for instance replanting. So we will not use trees unless it's replanted. We make sure biodiversity is secured. We, we take care of uh, fragile areas in the forest, bottomlands and wetlands. Uh, so, uh, and we have set up uh, in the industry uh, an arms length certification scheme that uh, can certify that what we take, the, the biomass we take, is actually sustainable. How are you going about promoting bioenergy? Well, I think uh, bioenergy needs to, to show that it has a relevance, uh, both for us in the industry, but also for society. I think there are three key parameters uh, that we need to, uh, to, to live up to. One is competitiveness. We are under, under heavy competition from solar and wind. The other one is sustainability, which we talked about. To me, that is a license to operate. And the third one is that we need, that we, we need to show and prove that we can be this flex, flexible backup to wind and solar. 
and it's interesting you mentioned cost competitive. How cost competitive are you? Well, right now, biomass, uh, no, let me, let me put it another way. Just a few years back, converting uh, power stations from fossil fuels to biomass was uh, much cheaper than almost all, all other uh, renewables. That has changed over the past two years, basically. So now we see solar uh, coming down in cost, we see onshore wind coming down, we see offshore wind coming down. So actually today, uh, biomass is not as competitive as it used to be just 24 months ago. So we need to work on that in the industry to mobilize uh, the supply base, we need to work on the supply chain, the logistics, we need to work on, on efficiency in order to also make sure that biomass has a role in the future. What of the policy environment that you need in order to drive this sector forward? Well, I think we should uh, strive for in the sector to actually uh, be competitive uh, in our own terms. But obviously, uh, when we are in, a, in this transition mode, there needs to be uh, policy support uh, for doing this transformation where we get from a fossil-based power system into a green power system. But obviously, the end goal for us should be that we can compete on market terms. What do you think will happen next in, in the sector? Well, this is a sector that is undergoing uh, tremendous change uh, basically all the time. I think we need to work uh, both on, as I said, on our cost competitiveness, it's going to be very important. We need to work on the sustainability, where we are, of course, also hoping from that the EU could set uh, common uh, requirements across uh, the EU that allows bioenergy to, to, to take a role in, in the future mix. Um, and then we, I think we should also look into the uh, into the long-term future of, of, of biomass, how to use that not only in the energy system, but also in transportation, in chemicals and so forth. Thomas, fascinating. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much.